Welcome from Germany again. Today I went out into the forest again trying to capture some of those beautiful spring colors here. So just two weeks ago, the last time I went to the forest, all those trees still didn't have any leaves. And now in two weeks nature completely transformed and you now have this vibrant green which you only get in early spring. Later it will turn a darker green and yeah, I think this looks really nice and yeah, I thought I'd try to capture it today so I came to the forest and yeah I've been walking around here for I think around two hours and honestly I haven't found a composition so it's really hot today there's no fog obviously it's a beautiful sunny day so there's lots of lots uh, lots of contrasts so it's hard to to find a composition which creates some um, interest so if I point the camera in any direction, I just have many, many trees, lots of details and yeah, nothing for the viewer to focus upon. So I kind of failed finding this composition, but it's always a good idea if you don't find a composition pointing your camera straight into the landscape to look upwards. So for this here, it actually works quite nicely because if I'm photographing upwards, what I'll have in the photo is exactly what I came out to capture. And that's the colors, the beautiful green leaves. And also, if you photograph with a wide angle lens, pointing upwards creates some nice perspective. So the trees leaning into the frame. So something which I try to avoid if I'm shooting straight. If I'm shooting upwards, I can kind of use this distortion to create some strong focus into the middle, the center of the frame. And also I found this tree here, this tree stump, which is broken, which is a nice contrast to the other trees around and already positioned my camera here, which wasn't very nice, to be honest. So here I could have used the tilt screen of the Fuji with which I was shooting the last time but let's look at the photo. So I have a nice dynamic composition, lots of greens in the frame. And yeah, what I need to do is do bracketing and also focus stacking. So focus right up to the top of the trees and another focus on this tree stump here, just to make sure I have everything sharp. And yeah, from there, I don't yet know how this photo will look. I might even use the overexposed uh, photo where the sky is just white and try to apply some dreamy photo processing. So for now, I'm gonna take the photo and yeah, later we'll have a look at the photos and see what we can do with them in post-processing to yeah, get some nice dreamy atmosphere maybe. So see you in the office. So back in the office now and yeah, first of all, I want to apologize for the audio because when I was recording in the woodland, I was using the first time this H1 zoom recorder and yeah, I plugged in the microphone on the wrong side, which is actually the headphone output. So that's why I just had the audio from the GoPro, but now I'm recording to this device so we have decent audio again and yeah I had a look at the photos and already processed one of them and I think it turned out quite nicely and I'll now show you what I did to the photo how I tried to create some mood and atmosphere in it and yeah bring it to a photo which I yeah would even put into my portfolio so let's head right into it so this is the photo we're gonna work on now it's the last shot I did, so I was putting this tree stump centered in the composition and having all the trees leaning into the frame and pointing into the center. And also I overexposed the sky and this doesn't bother me here because the processing I'm now gonna do is heading into some kind of a dreamy direction where I don't need a blue sky above. So. As it is, the photo contains too much detail. When you look at this, you don't know where to look. So there's green everywhere, there's trees. And 
what I want to do now is create some atmosphere, some mood. And I can show you in which direction we're now going. So this here is the final image, which is a bit darker. And yeah, for me, I think it contains much more atmosphere. So I tried to bring in some kind of a misty, foggy atmosphere here. So something which I already showed you in a, another tutorial of mine where I was working on a waterfall image. So I'll link this below or if you look at the upper right, you should see a link now. And you can also watch this because I'll use similar techniques now to get from this image here to this one. So as a first step, I'm gonna darken this image a bit and bring in some contrast. And I normally do this as also I'm showing in my longer tutorials by using Viveza from the Nick tools and I'll put a link into the description below because this plugin is still free so you can download it and install it and yeah I'm quickly showing what I'm doing so if you bring up the plugin you have some sliders here unfortunately this is in German but I'll translate so that's the brightness. I bring it down a bit. Second slider contrast, bring it up a bit. So giving the image a bit more punch, but I don't want to have too much saturation. So I'm bringing down the saturation a bit, a little bit of structure, which might look nice in this tree here, but all in all, I'm not doing all too much. So I think I'm gonna leave this as it is now, press okay. And I could have totally done all those settings with curves and some other adjustments in Photoshop. But I just think this is a little quicker because I have all the sliders in place. So what I'm now doing is here I have this shadow highlights warning, which you know from my other tutorials. And if I switch it on, you see I now have some areas which are too dark. And since I'm heading for a dreamy photo, I'll avoid areas or two dark areas here. So what I'm gonna do, I click, double click on this layer and the blend if will now help me to remove the effect from the dark tones and I'll just pull up this triangle. So let's do this again. So first pulling up and then holding Alt, clicking on it, which actually splits it and makes the transition a little smoother. And I'm gonna go with something like this so I can't completely prevent the dark tones because this was already in my starting image, but that's okay. I just want to avoid larger areas from getting completely black. So I can now deselect this image and now it's time for the next step. So the next step I'm doing is called soft glow montage. And it's a technique I learned many, many years ago and it's very simple. I just go to the channels, control click on the RGB channel, which basically creates a luminance selection. So you know this from my luminosity mask tutorials. Now I go down here to the um, adjustment layers <coughs> and select the solid color. And I'm going with a very bright color, which has a little bit of a yellowish greenish tint and I press OK. Now this doesn't look too good yet. Let's look at the mask. So you see here basically a luminosity mask and what I now do to create some soft glow is go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and yeah I'm using something around 60 to 80 and this always depends on how many megapixels your image has. So just go with what you like. And I think I'm gonna go with, yeah, like 72 and I press okay. Now I'm doing two things with this layer. For this, I duplicate it and hide this one. <clears throat> the first layer I'll set to soft light and basically that's what the soft glow montage is. And it also works nicely in beauty retouching. 
but it brightens the image too much. So I'll counter this setting with a curves layer. And here I darken. And let's put those to a group to see the before and after. And now this looks already nice because it removes some of the contrasts in the image. So some of the micro contrasts and makes it a bit more dreamy. But again, I have to be careful here with the curves layer and use blend if to avoid those areas getting dark or black. So that's the first step. Let's look at the second layer. I just leave it like this, <clears throat> put it into a group and put a black mask onto it. And now I'm just using a white brush with like 10% and draw in some of the brightening. And this already looks a little bit misty to me. And yeah, I'll focus the attention or the drawing on areas which are already bright and more to the center of the frame. Okay, so that's it about the soft glow montage. And yeah, let's see before and after. So we start with the base, then it by Visa, and now this soft glow. And we already have a much more pleasing result than the image we started with. So next I want to work a little bit on the colors. And I'm trying to create a little bit of a color contrast and also make the greens a little less, yeah, let's say a little less neon. Because in nature, those greens look very nice, but now in this picture, in parts, it's a little too, yeah, too colorful, I think. So too intense. So what I'm gonna do is I create a photo filter. And let's first start with the bright tones, which I'm gonna warm up a bit. And I'm going for a yellow and not going that far, Redu uh, reduce the density a bit. And now I double click again and I use the blend if again because I just want the bright areas to be affected by this warming. And I click on Alt and split this again. And if we click on this color overlay, we actually see where this mask is, yeah, basically affecting the image. So let's go with something like that. Deselect this color overlay now, press OK. And now I have some slight warming of the bright tones and I can reduce the density a bit more. And I do another photo folder now and I'm going with some cyan, but also much less density. And I'm doing the opposite now, I'm doing blend if, but I'm restricting this filter now to the darker tones. So I'm bringing down the bright triangle and split it. And let's again have a look. So it mostly affects the trees, the darker tones. And I press OK. And I can now also tune the density a bit. Before and after. Let's put those in a group actually to see them combined. So before and after. So it's not too much, but even such slight changes help to create an atmosphere. And especially color changes are very powerful. So as a next step, we're using the technique from the waterfall video I was referring to. And I want to draw a little bit of mist into the scene. For this, I just grab the rectangular selection tool, create a little rectangle here, also create a layer. And now by holding shift, back, uh, shift delete, or how it's called, backspace, put 50% gray into this rectangle. Now I go to filters, render, clouds. I deselect, Control T brings up the transformation tool and I'm now just scaling this up. So I'll use this cloud structure 
as a guide now when I'm drawing in some fog to have some yeah, structure and don't just draw flat fog into the scene. And I also put in a little blur on this layer. Actually, I wanted to do Gaussian blur, so I'm going with like 30%, press OK. So what I want, now want to do is to load this structure here into selection and again I go to channels, control click on the RGB channel. And this gives me a selection of the brightness values. I can now deselect or hide this layer, create a new blank layer, control H hides the selection and now with a bright brush again, Again, I'm using this yellowish, greenish, white and like 10% I'm going to draw into the image. And again, I'm drawing mostly into the middle parts, but I'm also giving those areas which are more distant a few strokes. So usually with fog, the farther away the objects are, the more the fog conceals them. And yeah, I'm trying to recreate this a bit by drawing now into the frame. And I will not draw across this tree stump in the foreground. So this one I'll spare. I just focus on those farther away areas. And if I'm going too far with this, I can put a, a mask also on this later and remove some of the effect. So what I'll now do is I use a bit of a vignette. So get the circular selector here, select the middle area, control shift I inverts this selection. And now, oops, I didn't want to do that. Let's do this again. I want to create a curves layer and darken it and mainly darken the outer parts. Now I use the filter, blur, Gaussian blur with a very high radius to smooth out this transition. And now this gives me a nice vignette. And let's again check the shadows and highlights. So I don't want black areas. So this were already quite some techniques and yeah, we're close to the final result I'm after. I want to show you yet another technique to get a little bit more contrast and also yeah, get the colors a little darker. And for this, I'm gonna use a black and white layer and I'm gonna scroll through the different effects we have and I can also tune them But I'm not going for a black and white image here actually. What I'm doing now is setting this to soft light. And yeah, the effect now is much too hard. So usually what you do, you use the fill and reduce it to something beneath 50%. And also if I bring up the shadow highlights warning, as with the other layers, again, I'm doing some blend if to remove the effect on the very dark tones. Press OK. And now I can also fine tune it. So play with the different colors. So brighten some colors, darken some colors. <clears throat> and yeah, that's a very nice technique. And I think this is now very close to the image I showed you in the beginning. And at least the techniques were the same. The result might look a little different. So let's compare this. Yeah, so here I did a little different drawing of the mist and it's always a very creative process. And you see two days later, I'm doing this now and it already looks different. So you now know the techniques and yeah, for your images, it's also just using those techniques, playing around and 
you're trying to get to a result which you like and what I'm now doing maybe is mix the two results I got because if you're doing such creative stuff where you're yeah, working on the atmosphere of an image it's sometimes even good to work on a result then leave the photo for a few days and do it again or yeah adjust the result a bit because this is sometimes if you're working too long on an image you just don't see what you don't like and what you like anymore so i hope you like this tutorial if so make sure to leave it a thumbs up and also if you're not already subscribed please subscribe and yeah you can also comment if you have questions about the techniques or suggestions for further videos see you